Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at catalysts. We're going to talk about what a catalyst actually is, how catalysts can speed up the rates of reactions, and look at the differences between homogeneous or heterogeneous catalysis, including examples of both. Before we talk in detail about catalysts, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Rates of reaction describe how quickly reactions are occurring. They can be measured in terms of the speed at which reactant concentration decreases or the speed at which product concentration increases, giving the units moles per decimeter cubed per second. In order for a reaction between two substances to occur, particles of each must collide together. If a collision between the two happens with enough energy, the activation energy, and leads to the formation of new products, the collision is described as successful. The greater the frequency of these successful collisions occurring per second, the faster the rate of a reaction. Activation energy refers to the minimum amount of energy that particles must collide with in order for a reaction to occur. Recap done? Let's go! Collision theory tells us that reactant particles are constantly colliding and the vast majority of these collisions don't lead to the forming of new products, as most particle collisions don't occur with enough energy. Activation energy. A catalyst is a substance that provides a slightly different route or pathway for a reaction to occur, meaning the particles don't have to collide with as much energy in order to react. Catalysts, therefore, lower the activation energy of a reaction. We can show this using reaction profile diagrams, which represent how the energy of reactants change during a reaction as the products get formed, with the activation energy being represented by the increase in energy of the reactants at the start of the reaction, this energy coming from the collisions between reactant particles. When a catalyst is used, an energy profile looks slightly different and has a lower peak in energy than without the catalyst, as the activation energy gets lowered. As particles are constantly colliding every second, if the activation energy is lowered, a greater proportion of these collisions are now successful, increasing the rate of the reaction. The frequency of successful collisions increases. It's really important to understand that the total number of collisions each second and the energy at which those collisions are occurring doesn't change, just that as the activation energy is lowered, suddenly more of the collisions will occur with enough energy to lead to a reaction. We can see this by looking at Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves with number of molecules on the y-axis versus energy of molecules on the x-axis. The area under the curve to the right of the activation energy mark represents the proportion of molecules in a system that can collide with the required activation energy and have successful collisions. If a catalyst is used, the activation energy for the reaction is decreased and now is at a lower energy on the x-axis, meaning the area under the curve to the right of this mark now represents a greater proportion of the particles that can collide with the required activation energy compared to with no catalyst. A greater proportion of particles colliding with the required activation energy each second means, little surprise, a higher frequency of successful collisions, and therefore a faster rate of reaction. There are lots of different ways catalysts can work in a reaction, meaning a one-size-fits-all description doesn't really exist. However, all catalysts enable a reaction to occur by a different route or pathway. It's a bit like trying to get up a mountain. A cable car can help you get up a mountain much quicker and more easily than simply by walking. 
You start and end in the same place, regardless of how you got up the mountain, it's just you went by a slightly different, faster route if you used the cable car. In the same kind of way, a catalyst can help two reactants react faster by providing a different route to get from the start, the reactants, to the end, the products. The starting and end points are the same, meaning the reactants and products have the same energies. It's just the process has occurred by following a different route or pathway. Just like a cable car can go back down a mountain and be used again, a catalyst in a reaction can also be used again to help other reactant particles react. This is because catalysts don't get used up in reactions. Their concentrations after a reaction remain the same as before. This isn't to say catalysts can't react, some definitely do, and catalysts often change during a reaction by reacting with reactant particles. However, they will always reform before the end of the reaction. There are huge numbers of catalysts and a mind-bending number of different ways they can work in reactions. However, we tend to describe catalysts as either homogeneous or heterogeneous. Reactions that use homogeneous catalysts are examples of homogeneous catalysis, and reactions that use heterogeneous catalysts are examples of heterogeneous catalysis. Homogeneous catalysts are in the same phase as the reactants. For example, if reactant particles are dissolved in water, aqueous, a catalyst that is also dissolved in water and aqueous would be acting as a homogeneous catalyst. Equally, if the reactants were in gaseous state and the catalyst also in a gaseous state, the catalyst would again be an example of a homogeneous catalyst. Aqueous transition metal ions are commonly used as homogeneous catalysts as they have variable oxidation states, allowing them to easily oxidize and reduce other aqueous ions. A classic example of homogeneous catalysis is the reaction between iodide and thiosulfate ions. Both of these ions are negatively charged, meaning collisions between the two are unlikely as the negative charges of each repel, and this makes the reaction very slow. An Fe2 plus catalyst can be added, however, that provides an alternative pathway for the reaction to occur, massively decreasing the activation energy required and increasing the rate of the reaction. Here, the Fe2 plus ion catalyst must also be aqueous, like the iodide and thiosulfate ions, making it a homogeneous catalyst, and this an example of homogeneous catalysis. Heterogeneous catalysts are in a different phase to the reactants. For example, if reactant particles are in gaseous state and the catalyst used is a solid, the catalyst would be a heterogeneous catalyst, as it is in a different phase to the reactants. The most common type of heterogeneous catalysis is for a solid-based catalyst with gaseous or aqueous-based reactants, and the process occurs in stages. The reactants diffuse onto the surface of the catalyst and then the reactants are absorbed onto the catalyst itself. It is at this point that the reaction starts and an intermediate gets formed, before the reaction is completed and the products made. The products desorb from the surface of the catalyst and other reactant particles will then diffuse onto the surface to repeat the same process. A common example of this is the contact process, where sulphur trioxide is formed from sulphur dioxide and oxygen, both gases. A solid vanadium oxide catalyst is used, and as the reactants are gases and the catalyst is solid, the process is described as heterogeneous catalysis. So, to summarise, Catalysts decrease the activation energy needed for a particular reaction by providing an alternative reaction pathway. When a catalyst is used, a greater proportion of the collisions between reactants are successful compared to without a catalyst, as more particles now collide with the required activation energy per second. 
as shown by a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve. And this means the frequency of successful collisions increases, increasing the rate of the reaction. A catalyst isn't used up in a reaction. It gets reformed before the end of the reaction and can be used again. Homogeneous catalysts are in the same phase as reactants and heterogeneous catalysts are in a different phase to the reactants. For solid-based catalysts with gaseous or aqueous reactants, the catalysis occurs in several stages. Reactants diffuse onto the catalyst surface. Reactants are absorbed onto the catalyst. The reaction starts and an intermediate is formed. The reaction completes and products are made that desorb from the surface of the catalyst. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.